And it's not fair Amen. to those of us who are here and trying to support this church. Even those who haven't been here and have not received the Lord's Supper, there are some who have been responsible every step of the way with financially supporting this church. And there is no question about the validity of their membership. But well, there are some of you who have ghosted us. Come on, Pastor. And that is not proper. So I pray that you will hear what it is I'm saying and you will govern yourself according. Amen. Come with me now to the gospel recorded by John. The first chapter. John, the first chapter, and I want to read in your hearing verse number 9 and 10 from the New International Version. John, chapter 1. John. Chapter 1. And I would like to read in your hearing verses 9 and 10 from the New International Version. Hear ye the word of the Lord. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world. And though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize. Yeah. Allow me to read it one more time. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world. And though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. Mm -hmm. Amen. The grass withers and the flower fades. But the word of God shall stand forever. With this serving as the premise of our focus Today, I want to talk about the fatal failure to not recognize Jesus. The fatal failure to not recognize Jesus. Pray with me, if you please. It may be easier today for us to notice the darkness in the world than ever before. It may be easier today for us to notice the moral darkness and the spiritual darkness in the world than ever before. I am not talking about how early it gets dark in the evening. Nor am I talking about how late it stays dark in the morning. But I'm talking about the darkness that is far more dangerous and detrimental to whatever soul that finds itself lost in it. The fact of the matter is that the world is a very dark place. And it has not recently become dark, but it has been dark, it's been dark for a very long time. How long, you ask? 
Ever since sin entered into the world, the world has been a dark place. Because you see, sin is an act that violates God. Sin is an act that offends his holiness. Sin is an act that disregards his authority. Sin is an act that disrespects his dominion. Sin is an act that disobeys his word. Sin is an act that undermines his divinity. Sin is an act that cuts across the creator. It dishonors his deity. It subordinates his sovereignty. And it grieves the God of our salvation. So it's no wonder that the more we act out against him, the more dark the world will become for us. And while the world has been dark ever since Adam ate of the forbidden fruit, make no mistake about it, it has become even darker since then. And we're not surprised, are we? Believers who read the script and who study the word have been knowing this darkness would come for a long time. How so, preacher? Because 2 Timothy 3 told us. And I want you to listen to where you might find yourself in this list as I read it in your hearing. Here's what 2 Timothy 3, starting at verse 1, says. But mark this. There will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves. Is that you? Lovers of money. Is that you? Boastful. Is that you? Proud. Is that you? Abusive. Is that you? Disobedient to their parents. Is that you? Ungrateful. Is that you? Unholy. Is that you? Slanderous. Is that you? Without self-control. Is that you? Brutal. Is that you? Not lovers of the good. Is that you? Treacherous. Is that you rash? Is that you conceited? I know that's somebody, but is that you? Lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Is that you? How so, you ask? How did we know the darkness was coming to the world? Because Matthew 24 and 12 told us, and I like the way the Berean Standard Bible says it. It says, because of the multiplication of wickedness. The, the New International Version says, because of the increase of wickedness. But I like how Berean put it. They said, because of the multiplication of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. How did we know the darkness was coming? Because Second Timothy 4 told us, for the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. And so you see, church, whenever you put an increase in wickedness along with a decrease in sound doctrine, stay with me now, and whenever you put an increase in sin 
along with a decrease in the word, you can't help but to wind up with a very dark, dismal world. And that's just what we have. We have a very dark world growing darker every day. But this sinful presence of darkness in the world is precisely why God will send his love into the world by sending light into the world. The true light that the light might push back on the depth of darkness and lead us to the life of light. Verse 9 of our text says, the true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. That's what it says. You saw it. You read it for yourself. You heard it. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. It is this coming into the world that we now celebrate. It is this coming into the world that we now honor. It is this coming into the world that we now venerate, observe, and rejoice over. Because Christmas for the Christian is the hallowed or holy reminder of the fact that Christ, the true light, was born. Amen. Amen. His coming into the world is why we decorate. Yeah. His coming into the world is why we exchange gifts. His coming into the world is why we become so festive to acknowledge and recognize that Jesus Christ, the true light, has come into the world to offer the life of light as an alternative to the death of darkness. Jesus even says so himself in John 8 verse 12 when he says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And so with Jesus coming into the world and with Jesus being born, into the world, we know that light, the moral light, the spiritual light, the true light is available to whoever would receive it. Yeah. So why is there still so much darkness in the world? Why is the world so cold? And why is the world so cat? And why is the world so true? Yeah. If the light is for everyone, but everyone does not have it, then what is the problem? Come on now. Well, I believe it's right here when Jesus said, whoever follows me. Yeah, yeah. When Jesus said, whoever follows me, me, he lost a whole lot of people right there. Yeah. Because it seems that there are some people who prefer the darkness over the light. Uh -huh. And there are those who would rather remain lost in it than to be saved from it. Is anybody in church today? Jesus reiterates this point in John 3, 19. When he said, this is the verdict. Light has come into the world. Uh -huh. But people love darkness instead of the light because their deeds were evil. Lord have mercy. And this is the problem with the world. And this is why the world remains such a dark place. Because people love darkness. Instead of the light, and because their deeds are evil, and because they don't want to be exposed by the disinfecting nature of the sun, and because they'd rather be complacent than convicted, terminal, than transformed and in sin rather than saved. That is the problem 
with the world. But then it blew my mind even further when verse 10 of our text said he was in the world. And though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. Uh, did you hear that? Come on now. Did you hear that 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 that, that profundity of irony there? The, it, it is quite staggering. The, the paradoxical nature of it is quite perplexing because let me see if I can make it more plain to you. Can you imagine the claim not recognizing his own power? Come on. Can you imagine that which has been created not recognizing its creator? That which has been made not recognizing its maker? And that which has become a living soul not recognizing the one from whom they have received the very breath of life? He was in the world and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. Now I tell you, my father, what really struck me about this text is not just what it paradoxically says about the world, but what it makes me think about the church. We know how the world when it doesn't follow Jesus. Yeah. But what about the church? Yeah. How does the church look? And how does the church act? And how does the church behave when she, the bride, does not follow Jesus, the bridegroom? Uh -huh. How is the church today? What is the condition of the church today? What is the state of the church today? What is the moral and spiritual temperature of the church today? Of those who profess to be following Jesus. Because when I read verse 10, I couldn't help but wonder if what was being said about the world could also be said about the church. And while we are never to try to add or subtract from the word of God, I couldn't help but wonder how the verse would read if the word world was replaced with the word church. Bear with me, if you please. So rather than he was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him, what if it read he was in the church and though the church was made through him the church did not recognize him what if that is what it reported what is what if that is what it said I tell you I can't help but wonder if the world was the only place with the darkness when it could be potentially said that the church is growing darker itself every single day. Yeah. What are you talking about, preacher? Do you know how many times people in church have issues with one another? Yeah. Come on. Do you know how many times people in church frown at one another? Do you know how many times people in church don't speak to one another? I'm talking about recognizing Jesus in the church. I, 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 I'm not talking about the world no more. Now I'm talking about the world of the church. I'm talking about the church world. Do you know how many times people in church don't like one another? Do, 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 do you know how many times people in church speak slanderously and negatively about one another? Do you know how many times people in church won't forgive one another? I'm talking about, I'm talking about 
talking about recognizing Jesus in the church. Do you know how many times people in church will lie yeah. on one another? Yeah. Is anybody in here today? Do you know how many times people in church will pray to one another? Yeah. Do you know how many times people in church will fight one another? Do you know how many times people in church will fight the pastor? Do you Facebook? Do you in person? Do you know how many times people in church bring darkness? So I know that the world is a dark place because it has failed to recognize Jesus. But what in the world is going on with the church? Can it be said about the church that the church is failing to recognize Jesus too? Can it be said about the church that the church is failing to acknowledge Jesus too? Can it be said about the church that the church is failing to know Jesus too? Let me bring it closer to you. Can it be said about you that you are failing to recognize Jesus in your life? Come on. Can it be said about you that you are failing to recognize the Savior of your life in your life? Come on. You know, about 27 years ago, Johnny Cochran's name was ringing loudly all across America. Because we saw him work his way through a system, a legal system, that normally works against us. Yeah. That normally works against people of color. And he was able to work that system for us in securing the acquittal of O.J. Simpson. Johnny Cochran was black America's savior at that time. Around that time, I was a student just down the road at Mount Union College. And one day I was hanging out with a friend of mine. He's been here to the church before. And we were watching TV when Johnny Cochran appeared on the screen for some interview. And when I saw him, I simply said out loud, Johnny Cochran. And my friend said to me in response, oh, is that who that is? Now, mind you, he had already won the case. <laughs> and, 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 and my friend said, oh, is that who that is? They had only been on TV just about every day for almost a year. But my friend said, oh, is that who that is? Well, I couldn't believe my ears because I never would have imagined that there was a black person, let alone a black man in America who was college educated, who would fail to recognize Johnny Cochran. He had heard of him and he knew of him. However, he failed to recognize him. And that's happened with you before, perhaps, in another way. When you run into someone that you used to know or someone that you haven't seen in a long time, whereby when you see them, you actually fail to recognize who they are. Has that ever happened to anybody in here before? Yeah. That when you run into somebody that you haven't talked to in a long time, that you haven't communicated with in a long time, that you haven't seen in a long time, such that when you finally do bump into them, you actually fail to recognize who they are. Yeah. I wonder if that same thing can be said about you 
and Jesus. How well do you recognize Jesus in your life on a daily basis? How well do you acknowledge Jesus in your life on a daily basis? How well do you recognize the master? How well do you recognize the Messiah? How well do you recognize the true light of the world in your life? How well do you recognize Mary's son? How well do you recognize God's gift? How well do you recognize the Christ in your life? Johnny Cochran may have saved O.J. Simpson from going to jail, but Jesus can save you from going to hell. And this is why the failure to not recognize Jesus is fatal. Because he did not come into a dark world for us to die in the darkness. Amen. But he came into a dark world for us to live in the light. And the light will only give you life in accordance to how well you recognize, acknowledge, honor, and obey Jesus. Don't just recognize him on Sunday morning. Don't just recognize him at Christmas. Don't just recognize him Resurrection Sunday. Don't just recognize him when you get a new car. Don't just recognize him when you get a new job. Don't just recognize him when you get a new boo. Don't just recognize him when you get a good doctor's report. Don't just recognize him when you get some extra money. Don't just recognize him when you get a new house. Don't just recognize him when your kid folk come home from jail. Don't just recognize him when things are going your way. But learn how to recognize Jesus. Learn how to recognize the true light. Learn how to recognize the Savior every day that he gives you life. He recognizes you yeah. by God. Amen. Amen. So why can't you recognize him by living? Yeah. Well, we have been brought from the darkness into the marvelous light. By none other than Jesus the Christ. Yeah. So let us not fail to recognize the true life that gives life yeah. to everyone. For he was in the world. And though the world was made through him, yeah. the world did not recognize him. Uh -huh. Let that not be said about you, his church. The doors to my father's house stand open to you. Amen. There may be someone who has failed to recognize Jesus in the salvation of their soul and the forgiveness of their sin. There might be someone here or online who has failed to accept Jesus Christ, the gift of God, as their Lord and personal Savior. There might be someone in our midst who has failed to receive the benevolent offering of God through the bloody sacrifice of Jesus Christ our Lord, that we might have a right to the tree of life and that we might one day be able to live eternally in joy and peace and glory with the Lord. All you have to do is receive him, accept him, open up your heart and Agree to let Jesus Christ come in. He'll make you brand new. He'll cause you to be, as we say, born again. And he will wash your slate 
clean and put you in right standing with God, your creator, your maker, your everything. What a powerful gift we have received in Jesus Christ. What a dynamic offering we have received in Jesus Christ. For Jesus Christ is truly the gift that keeps all giving. Because not only does he save your soul soon as you accept his salvation, but he will continue to make intercession for you and he will continue to lead and to guide you and he will continue to be with you every step of the way. Giving you an advantage in life that you otherwise would not have. God bless you.